Uh, anybody see the uh, Ken Burns documentary last night on, on Jefferson? Missed it. Mm. Yeah, well, it, it's funny. It wasn't what we expected. We watched it together, and I just, I, I, we couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's just, you know, to hear the ads, you think it's one thing, but it's not that. Four stars. Uh, Ken Burns' documentary on Jefferson last night. So we, we had to watch it, and it just wasn't what we expected. We brought the tape in. Yeah, we, you, can you roll that tape? Yeah, sure can. It all started in the Corona section of Queens, New York. A small house in a neighborhood that grew with time. It was a time where racial inequalities were at wit's end and sex, drugs, and rock and roll were still an excuse. This is a story about a man and his family. A man who at this particular time in his life decided not to march, but rather starch. Not dream, but rather clean. That man was Jefferson. George Jefferson. <laughs> and for what Jackie Robinson did for baseball, George Jefferson did for the dry cleaning business. This is the story of his family and of his life. George's neighbor from Queens, Edith Bunker, remembers. Oh, sure! I remember the Jeffersons! Oh, they were very sweet people! I'll never forget what Archie said when they moved in next door! Oh, jeez, Edith, not... Well, needless to say, oh, she didn't have a fondness for George. But I love Louise. She was a doll. In fact, her and I became friends, as did my son-in-law, Michael, and their son, Lionel, who also dropped off our laundry once a week. He was a very nice boy. The show would historically cross over into racial issues. It dealt with stereotypes. When a black family moved into a white-collar part of town as they moved on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky, where hell, they moved on up to the east side. They finally got a piece of the pie. Franklin Cover, who played Tom Willis, George's new neighbor on the east side, remembers the Jeffersons. Playing Tom Willis, being the only white guy on the set, yeah. It wasn't easy. There was no way to beat around the bush. It was reverse discrimination. It was plain and it was simple. And anybody there saw it and knew it. I was the outcast on the set. You know, I knew by certain looks I would receive from other actors. I could, I, you know, I saw. How could you not? The fact that my parking spot wasn't even on the same lot, that clued me in. Name calling, tons of it. Casper, I'm sorry. Cue ball, powder, snow white. And that's a couple of them. It didn't stop there. The meals, the meals, the food catered every day. It was the same. Bubba tea soul food. <laughs> not one single time, not once, not twice. We're talking Monday through Friday, three meals a day. I still cringe at the name Jambalaya. In all my years on the show, not once did they bring in deli. Not one single time. Where's the equality? Where is it? In retrospect, the one good thing that came out of my being on the Jeffersons is that I'm a much, much better dancer. <laughs> Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Gonna take a whole lot of Tarayan <laughs> just to get up at that hill. <laughs> Grammy Award winner and guest star in episode 13, Barry White, remembers Illabelle Sanford, Wheezy. Baby, maybe I remember. I was a guest star, baby, on the Jeffersons. Me and Isabel hit it off real good. I used to call her Easy Weezy. Yeah, baby. During the set changes, me and Isabel would go back to her trailer, baby, and together. We would tip the scales of love. Oh, yeah, baby. I like this style. I got all up in her hair. <laughs> she was smooth, baby. Real smooth. <laughs> and as the Jeffersons went on to make television history, by crossing over all the barriers, one thing remains certain to this day. They finally got a piece of the pie i i <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Wow. So not what we expected. I, I, I don't know. I thought it was going to be. Well, anyway. Okay.